Hello, I'm John Weston and in April 2020 I was appointed by the South Eastern Baptist Association as a pioneering minister in Strood, one of the Medway towns in Kent. In March of the previous year, Seba had inherited this premises, which had been previously been used by a small church congregation. From the front, you will see that it is a shop. Uh, this one here with the white frontage, uh, a shop in a local parade with uh, uh, accommodation above it. So various options were considered as to what to do with this amazing uh, inheritance. Should we use it to plant a church along a traditional model? Should we sell it and invest the proceeds in mission elsewhere? Well, as we got to know the area better, we realised that it was ideally situated for mission. Strood is a sprawling collection of residential estates, uh, a large part of which is bounded by the M2, the A2 and the River Medway. It's an area where there are high levels of social need. And one feature determined by the geography and its relation to other Medway towns is that all the community facilities are concentrated at one corner of this large triangular area and consequently there is only one church in the estates. The question remained, what would connect more effectively with the largely unchurched community around this premises? Well, meanwhile, I was developing ways of connecting with people using my passion for baking. So I'd done things like this. Uh, here I am in the middle of a field uh, at a fair, actually in Brentwood, this one. Uh, what I'd done was the previous day I'd baked about uh, 60 loaves of bread. Uh, I took along the little oven that you can see and actually baked a few more at the fair so that there was a lovely smell of freshly baked bread. And as people were attracted over, I simply gave away three loaves of bread and, uh, and used that to, uh, to begin conversations uh, with these folks. That was great fun. As well as doing that, I got involved in uh, arranging baking days, just gathering a group of people who wanted to uh, learn how to make a loaf of bread. And uh, just as we were doing that, um, bread takes time to rise, so we'd be relaxing and chatting uh, over a cup of coffee. Um, and again, just speaking about who I am and my faith in Jesus Christ. And that led to this, the Bread of Life course. Uh, it's a six session course uh, that I've written that... Uh, uh, teaches bread making skills uh, and again I use to, uh, to open up conversations about Jesus, the bread of life. Just to give you a flavour of that, uh, one of the sessions uh, that I use is teaching people how to make hot cross buns. And uh, just as we're shaping the buns or whatever, I simply ask people, do you know why we put a cross on these buns? And many of the folks I've had on the courses I've done to date simply have no idea even why there's a cross on a hot cross bun. Uh, so I just tell them it's to do with Easter and Jesus dying on the cross. And very often, as we continue to shape the buns and to put the crosses on them, uh, people are then asking me, that's really interesting, tell me more about that. And I have to say, it's just a really fun uh, and relaxed way of uh, sharing my faith in Jesus Christ. So my passion for baking and this premises uh, came together. God brought us together and uh, a clear vision emerged to use this place uh, to create a bakery and coffee shop through which a worshipping community could emerge. My first task, which has inevitably been delayed by lockdown, is to project manage the building redevelopment. 
Alongside that, I'm serving as a part-time interim minister of the nearest Baptist church. That's really good to enable me to build relationships and to network with others. We hope to open in spring 2021. But what will actually happen here? Well, one thing is that uh, I'm going to operate a micro bakery for one day a week, uh, producing artisan loaves like these ones that you can see in the picture, uh, producing those loaves to order. Uh, initially, for uh, another four days of the week, we'll be operating in this, this very space as a coffee shop. There will be other activities that will occur in the coffee shop space. Exactly what they'll be will depend largely on who walks through the door and what their desires and their needs might be. But I'm sure that the Bread of Life course will feature among those activities. I can't do all this alone. I'll need volunteers to come alongside me and to wait on table, to be available to listen and to talk with the customers. The idea is that this place will be self-sustaining, that after the investment to transform the building, the revenue will cover my stipend. And the idea is not that baking will provide my income and then I'll do church in my spare time, but rather that this will be an example of integral mission, that this will be church, a place of discipleship growth as well as a place of people finding faith. God has been amazingly good in providing the building and many professionals who are providing services. But as you can see, it is early days. Challenges still lie ahead. I guess one that's on my mind and my prayers at the moment is the financial one. There is much more work needed on the building than we did originally envisaged and hoped. And so uh, I'm spending a fair bit of time writing grant applications and the like. For lives to be transformed, for this community to be transformed, we'll take a move of the Holy Spirit. I'd love you to join with me in praying for that, perhaps by signing up for the monthly news and prayer updates that I produce. If you'd like to receive those, uh, or to find out more, just to chat about what is going to go on here, then please do contact me via the email address that will appear on the screen in just a moment. It just remains for me to say uh, thank you so much for your interest in this project. And may God bless you. Thank you.